Hi, welcome to Introductory Macroeconomics, and in this video, I'll be going through some of the key basic elements that you will need to master to be great at this topic. The first thing we need to ask ourselves is, what is macroeconomics, and why is this different from micro? In a nutshell, macroeconomics is looking at the bigger picture of the economy. An economy actually makes up of many different types of entities, and we're going to be seeing this in detail later. An economy is also known as a country, so for example, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, um, the United States of America, etc. Et so let's take a look at what are the different types of entities that make up the economy. So the first one is actually your consumers or what we call households. These are pretty much ordinary citizens of the economy, people like you and me. And it's also made up of firms or industries who run pretty much businesses and other similar activities. It is also made up of the government bodies and there's also the foreign sector into play. So, you know, as we live in a more globalized world, there's always relationships between different countries and these things require economic analysis as well. So how this is different from microeconomics is... Money takes a whole new level of importance when it comes to our analysis. And uh, just to share with you, money is also known as liquidity. So, with money in the picture, what will occur is borrowing and lending activities. So, people borrow and lend for many different reasons. Um, let's not dwell into that. And when there's borrowing and lending, what you actually have is this thing called interest rates. Right? So if you're going to borrow money, you're going to have to pay interest. And if you lend money, you're going to be earning interest income. So interest rates actually affect the level of spending um, in this particular economy. And spending actually translates to income. Uh, we're going to go through this uh, a bit later. So let's look at why interest rates is going to affect spending. So if interest rates are relatively low, what this means is that the opportunity cost of holding money in your own pocket instead of putting it in a bank is low because the amount of interest rates you could have earned from the bank is low, right? So spending is going to increase because you have got money in your pockets, you're going to spend. If interest rates are higher, then the opportunity cost of holding money in your own pocket is going to increase because you could have earned that higher interest rates from the bank. So you're going to put your money in the bank, therefore, with lesser money in your pocket, you're going to spend less. Therefore, when interest rates are low, you actually save lesser, you spend more. And when interest rates are high, you save more and you spend less. Here you can see the inverse relationship. Now, income actually measures the performance of an economy. And the performance of an economy is actually managed by the government bodies. So the government bodies using certain policies can affect the interest rates of the economy, therefore affecting the performance or the income of the economy. And more specifically, we're talking about monetary um, policies. So how do we measure economic activity? Um, what are the indicators that we should be looking out for to determine whether the performance of the government is up to par? So what we usually measure is this thing called GDP, um, which stands for the Gross Domestic Product. Um, it is also known as income output, and the short form for it is actually a capital Y. So the GDP is actually the value of the total output of the economy in a particular year. So why do we want to measure the value of the total output in the economy? Well, that's because output equals to income. And if we know the income levels, then we know whether the government is running the economy properly or not. We're going to be going through in detail why output equals to income later, but in a nutshell, uh, we are assuming that what we produce, we are going to sell it locally as well as to foreign countries as well. So this actually translates into income for us. So another way of measuring um, output is actually the GNP, which stands for the Gross uh, National Product. And this is defined as the value of output by citizens of that particular country. So this is a um, more strict way of measuring output. Um, because this accounts for local businesses as well as citizens um, who are located overseas. So in a nutshell, to calculate your GNP, what you do is you're going to take your value of the GDP and you're going to add your net income. So what is net income? To calculate net income, what you're going to do is take total income minus total payments. Income here refers to the income that is earned by citizens or businesses that are located in this country or overseas. 
Payment refers to, of course, the payments to foreigners who are located within that country itself. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs, simple to understand and captivating, so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials, and exam solutions in the form of videos, which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.